Yes. So good afternoon to all gathered here. I'm immensely pleasured to be given the opportunity to introduce our alumnus, Mr. Clive James Carvalho, to you all. Mr. Clive has completed his schooling in Udupi and been in mechanical engineering at NMMIT during the batch of 2014 to 2018. Currently, he's pursuing his MS in production engineering and management at KTH Royal Institute of Technology, Sweden. Apart from academic excellence, Mr. Clive also shows keen interest in biking around Stockholm and wildlife photography. During his career in the manufacturing industry in Kenya, he found his niche in the production industry and chose it to define his future. His perseverance and love towards the subject opened him the gates of KTH, a top university with a multinational background, the perfect match which would help combine both technical and management aspects. At KTH, Mr. Clive enjoys working on projects and assignments, which increases his soft skills and teamwork, presentation and communication skills. Mr. Clive has been the international student ambassador for production engineering and management, and also a teaching assistant in CAD and other IT tools in industrial processes. He has also served as a full-time maintenance engineer at Four Mattress Limited, Kenya for a span of three years where he would, could apply his practical knowledge on CAD, installation and testing of new equipment and their effective management. He did his one month internship at the production assistant in Paper Division Polythene Industries Limited, Ramco group of companies where he was indulged in a quality assurance, machine maintenance, logistics handling and task optimization for the workforce. Mr. Clive has worked on several projects like designing of an assembly line for a cycle and operation planning of cylinder head at KTH Royal Institute of Technology. Mr. Clive has also received the best project of the year 2018 at NMMIT and has also won the Fluid Power Professionals Day 2018 title for presenting a technical paper based on design and fabrication of patient lift and shift system. Sir, your alma mater is proud of your achievements and wishes you all the very best for your future endeavors. Thus, without wasting any time, I would like to call upon Mr. Clive to enlighten our young minds with his words of motivation. Thank you very much. Okay. So, I don't know if any all of you have heard about KTH. So, KTH Royal Institute of Technology is in Stockholm, Sweden. So, let us start. The, I'll give a, a short presentation about KTH and other things in Sweden. Uh, what you have to do before coming to KTH and the living in Sweden. So about me, there's nothing to tell right now because everything has been told. There's something like, okay, the Swedish Fika, which I enjoy a lot. So Swedish Fika is during the break, during any break, we have a Fika. It's just coffee and some uh, sweets like cannabula is something called a, is a cinnamon bun, which is my favorite over here. And let's move on because everything is now known to you. Okay, now I'll tell you more about Sweden. Uh, Sweden is known as an open multicultural society with a tradition of welcoming students from all over the world. So we have students from various parts of the world pursuing their masters or even some of them even they're doing their bachelors. So Sweden has about 10 million inhabitants but the third largest country in EU by area. So it's not crowded. Uh, even Stockholm, it's not so crowded. It's very beautiful. And Sweden is also ranked as the world's most sustainable country according to the reports by Sustainable Development in 2021. Sweden is also known for being a progressive society. For example, Sweden is ranked fifth in the world when it comes to gender equality according to the World Economic Forum in 2022. The climate in Sweden varies a lot from summer to winter. The average temperature in January uh, during winter is around minus five. And July, the summers is just like, its average is 22. So today it's around six degrees right now. And the morning when I was coming to college, it was like zero degrees. And so most of you are, know about the Northern Lights. You have heard about it. And in Sweden, you can see it as far as Stockholm. So 
whenever I get a notification that, okay, there's Northern, you can see the Northern Lights. I just go out of my accommodation. There's a beach close by, sit at the beach and watch the Northern Lights, click some photos. Yes. So Sweden is also home to many multinational companies like IKEA, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, Electrolux, and Scania. Scania is situated, the head office of Scania is around a uh, one hour train ride from here. And a couple of examples of Swedish innovations are Skype, Spotify, Bluetooth, Tetra Pak, the modern seat belts. All of these, most of them are using it. Bluetooth, is, everyone is using Bluetooth right now. Spotify also, most of you use it. And in this picture, you can see the first image over here. Sorry. The first image. Um, most of you know about the Nobel Prizes. So Nobel Prize is awarded in Stockholm. Only the Nobel Peace Prize is awarded in Oslo. But the rest of the Nobel Prize is in Stockholm. So this is one of the event where the Nobel Prize was been awarded. Because uh, the Nobel Prize originates from the Swede um, scientist called Alfred Nobel, who invented dynamites. So let's move on to Stockholm, the capital of Sweden and the heart of Swedish trade business and innovation and where KTH is situated. So this uh, building over here is called the City House, the Stars Who Set. And that's where the Nobel Prize is awarded. You will also, the if you are joining KTH, your welcoming ceremony will also be held at the same place. So moving on, this is uh, Stockholm is home to about 2.5 million people and about 85,000 students. So there are so many student uh, accommodation areas and I stay in one of them. I will let you know more about it later. So, so sweet, Stockholm is also known for its rich cultural history and closeness to nature with 26 or 27 city parks. It is surrounded with nature everywhere. And Stockholm is built on 14 islands, and we have a archipelago of 24 island, 24,000 islands stretching out in the Baltic Sea. It is also ranked fifth among most livable cities in the world, and it's based on the factors of uh, ambulance speed, number of bike lanes, access to nature, crime statistics, and all. And it's also ranked as the third safest city in Europe, and number 10 in the world according to The Economist 2021. So before I talk, tell you more about KTH, let's move in. let me just show you a small video about KTH so you can get an uh, idea about KTH. Hi, and welcome to Sweden's largest, oldest, and highest ranked technical university. I am Akshat. And I'm Diana. And this is KTH Royal Institute of Technology. KTH is a diverse and equal university. Students and teachers are on a first name basis and personal development is as important as academic achievement. We offer 60 master's degree programs in areas such as architecture, computer science, industrial management and chemical engineering. Our programs provide you with advanced problem solving skills and give you the tools to move society in a more sustainable direction. And KTH's outstanding services support you in turning your ideas into innovation and your passions into exciting career opportunities. At KTH, we learn and excel together. Individual studies are coupled with group assignments, tackling real industry challenges, providing you essential teamwork skills, and inspiring you to explore new perspectives. This unique skill set is one of the reasons why 50% of KTH students get their first job offer even before graduating. Our five campuses sit in and around Stockholm, the open and progressive capital city of Sweden. It's an excellent setting for making friends for life, exploring your interests and pursuing your dreams. A place to transform yourself and the world we live in. Check out our master's programs at kth.se slash master. And we hope you'll join us at KTH this autumn. So welcome to KTH, Sweden's leading technical university. Now I'll tell you more about KTH. So KTH was established in 1827 
the reigning Swedish king, Carl Gustav XVI, is the guardian of the university. KTH is also ranked 89th in the world uh, through the latest QS ranking. The former president of US, President Barack Obama, has also visited KTH to hear about the sustainable innovation. Since the start, KTH has always been a center of many of the technological advances in Sweden. In the early 1950s, the country's first nuclear reactor was installed on the campus at the same time as Sweden's very first TV station went on air across the street. So the nuclear reactor is now moved out from KTH long back, but the place is still there and some events are usually held in the reactor. And it's quite an interesting place. I haven't been there, but I've heard a lot about it. And we do have an event in December. Hopefully I get a ticket to go in. So over the last 90, 190 years, KTH has gone up to become one of the most prominent technical universities in Europe, attracting talents from all over the world. The graduation ceremony takes place in the same building as the Nobel Prize ceremony, as I, sh I showed you the building previously. So one of our KTH professor, Hans, was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1970. He shared the Nobel Prize for Physics. And currently, KTH holds, has around 13,000 full-time students from all over the world. And 1,500 students are master students. KTH also has 2,000 PhD students. Among them, uh, more, it's mixed. Like we have from Swedish as well as PhD students from around the world. And we also have around 840 teaching staffs, which include professors, assistant professors, lecturers, associates, professors, and all. So these are so KTH has four campuses in and around camp Stockholm. The main campus, is, this is the main campus, which is situated at the edge of Stockholm. And it's also close to the Royal National Park in Sweden. We call it as uh, your garden. So we have the main campus over here, the student union building called THS. The campuses are strategically placed to promote cooperation with industries in defined areas. So we have KTH Sista here. KTH Sista is the campus for ICT education and it is located closely to uh, companies like IBM, Ericsson, Microsoft. They also have a lot of projects and researchers going on in collaborations with the companies. We have KTH Solna, KTH Flemingsburg, and KTH Sodatalia. KTH Sodatalia main, is mainly into sustainable development and they have close collaborations with Scania and AstraZeneca at Sodatalia. So if you're taking sustainable production development, you will have most of your classes in Sodatalia. And for me, I'm doing, I'm in the school of uh, ITM, the same school has so the, the, uh, the course offered by KTH Sodatalia. I'm doing my production engineering. So my campus, is, my building is here. I usually spend my time out here and my accommodation is somewhere, somewhere here. So it takes me like 15 minutes to come since Stockholm has a very good uh, pr public transport. There's no issue. And I do walk from in the forest every day to just climb my, for the enter my building because the back exit is close by to nature. And sometimes I do spot some deers. So it's good for photography for me. So KTH is also top in six subjects. It comes top 50 in the QS rankings. We have the subjects include electrical engineering, material science, mechanical engineering, and architecture and civil engineering. You can also see in the pictures, as I told you before, President Barack Obama has visited KTH to hear about sustainable innovation. Also, Professor Stephen Hawking has visited KTH in a conference in the black hole theory. KTH is ranked among 42 among universities worldwide in the THE impact ranking that assesses universities' performance against the United Nations Sustainability Goal. So most of us know about the sustainable development goals. And we have, the, we have graduates of KTH have the knowledge and tools 
for moving society in more sustainable development directions. So uh, if you go to our program in our website, the program shows the sustainable goals by each program which which program holds. So with us, we have Zingtong, who is a, a communication manager. Yeah. Welcome, Zingtong. Hi. Okay. The structure of education. So most of you are in your final year of bachelor's, I guess. So we have a master program, which is for two years. And the first three semesters, it will be mainly courses. You will be studying uh, the courses related to your fields, doing project works with them. And the final semester is usually the thesis project. So you'll be doing your master thesis with companies or the university. And you, there's also a possibility to uh, have an exchange program in one of your semesters. So you can, you'll have to apply apply for your exchange program and you can go to some other universities which uh, KTH has collaborations with. Okay. The master, KTH offers around 60 master programs given by five schools. Out of the 60 master programs, uh, 15 joint, 15 programs are joint master programs which are offered together with prominent universities worldwide. Student usually spends one year in KTH and one year at the uh, other university. And at the end, you will receive one master degrees from each so that you, so you'll get a dual master degrees at the end of your master's. So our first school is architecture, the School of Architecture and Build Environment. So these are the courses offered by the school. And our second program is School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. So those who want to enter into computer science, cybersecurity, uh, and embedded systems, ICT innovation. So we do have ICT innovation, which is a joint master program and renewable energy it's also a joint you can it's a joint eit you know energy so i have a friend of mine who does that program and she spent her first year in kth and second year in she's doing it in barcelona our third school is the school of engineering science so we have aerospace engineering applied and computational mathematics engineering mechanics engineering physics railway engineering and vehicle engineering. So after your bachelor's, if you're interested in any of the programs, you can contact us. We also have the School of Engineering Science in Chemistry, Biotechnology and Health. In, we have, in that we have industrial and environmental biotechnology, medical biotechnology. So. This is the last, uh, this is the School of Industrial Engineering and Management. And in this we have in engineering design, engineering material science, industrial management, in integrated product design, production engineering management. That's the course I study. Sustainable energy engineering, sustainable production development and technology-based entrepreneurship. So if I, I'll just give you a small glance on my program, that's production engineering and management which provides a solid foundation to become a professional with knowledge in both engineering and management aspects of production and their interaction. The engineering sites include operation integ and integration of manufacturing technologies, automation, maintenance, quality, um, and other softwares. And the management site covers decision-making, planning, control, and as other resources to achieve a sustainable production environment. So in my course, I am able to choose into two tracks. We have the industrial IT tools, which is mainly into design and not mainly into design, but we have design. We have the PLM system, digital factories. Then we have the production engineering and management, which is mostly towards the management side. We also have the industrial welding but track, but that's in Swedish. So the courses I've chosen are close to industrial IT because I am more interested in pursuing a character, uh, uh, sorry, a, a career towards as a process engineer or a design engineer. But I've I've taken some courses as a 
in the management field. So it gives me a good balance of it and I get to know all of the things. So let's see how your studies at KTH is. So what sets KTH apart from other universities is the personal approach to education. Classes and seminars are held in small groups and students are encouraged to solve problems together. We also encourage innovative ideas and entrepreneurship spirits among students. So we have courses and services uh, like KTH Innovation and KTH Business Incubators which helps us um, take our ideas to the industry. Our courses consist of lectures, seminar, teamworks, lab, laboratory works, and individual studies. Generally, you will study one or two courses at a time, giving you the possibility to focus better on one subject at a time. If they are written exams, they are usually done at the end of the course. Some of my courses do not have exams. They are mainly project works and assignments where we have to apply our practical knowledge, which is very good. Education at KTH is often done in collaboration with industry, giving students practical knowledge and their contacts for their future career. KTH has 12 strategic industries partners for deeper collaboration with industries and education. So for example, if you're a student with mechanical engineering, the chances are high that you will come in contact with big Swedish companies like Scania, Saab, Sandvik. So currently I'm working with a project with Sandvik and some of my friends are also working with a project with Scania. KTH has an extensive infrastructure for research and innovation with many advanced and state-of-the-art research environments and facilities such as lab, equipments, and learning environment. So we have the arrival and introduction day. Once you arrive in stock in Sweden, you will take part in the extensive two weeks introduction course program provided by the KTH in, and the Student Union. This program includes the traditional KTH welcome reception in the city hall. And also you get guided tours and social activities. It's the best time to make friends, new friends from all over the place and to know more about Stockholm and the Swedish society. So if you arrive during the arrival dates, uh, there is transports from the airport to the campus. So how is the student life in Stockholm? So if you are a stu uh, tuition fees paying student, you are usually guaranteed a one year accommodation by KTH. And after the first year, you'll have to move to another accommodation. And the monthly cost of living in Stockholm is around uh, 840 to 1,100 US dollars. That's approximately to 65,000 to 85,000. But the amount usually depends on the type of accommodation you want and uh, how and how um, how you live. So if you are in Stockholm, you are usually close to close to transport, so you can get home very quickly. So this is my life. I can show you like for, for a year. So this was the first time I saw Northern Lights in Stockholm. And this is my corridor mates. So I stay in a corridor accommodation. And these are my friends who stay together. We have my friends from uh, Singapore, uh, Mexico, Colombia, Netherlands, uh, US. And there are some from China, but they weren't there that day. Then this is my uh, batch, production batch. We hosted a Diwali party last year. And this is the Swedish traditional midsummer, which is done during the which is done during the fourth week of summer, June. And this is the iconic image which everyone wants in Sweden, in Stockholm, that's in Gamlastan. Okay, let's move on to the admission requirements. So to be eligible for the master's studies at KTH, you have to have a bachelor's degree equivalent to the Swedish bachelor's degree. And you must also be proficient in English. So for English, you can take the TOEFL exam or the IELTS exam academics. 
with a score of 6.5 in IELTS and no section lower than 5.5. You also have specific program requirements which vary from program to program and that can be found under kth.se slash masters. There are some programs which require a number of credits in specific subjects of interest so you can find more of the, more in, uh, information under kts.se slash masters and yeah. So the fees is uh, when you're uh, making an application, we have an application fees of 900 crowns. That's around um, around seven or 8,000 rupees. And the tuition fees is 310,000 Crowns, that's almost 25 lakhs, I guess 25 lakhs Indian rupees. And some, it also depends from program to program. Some programs have a different tuition fees that it would be nice if you could check it in the program. This, so code KTH also, uh, also provides scholarship. We have the KTH scholarship, which covers the tuition fees for the first year and the second year. Uh, but you have to have good results in your first year. The KTH scholarship does not include your living cost. And then we have the KTH India scholarship, which covers the tuition fees for the first year and second year. And it also provides you a scholarship for your monthly living allowance for 10 months, like during the academic year. And we have the KTH joint program scholarship, which covers the tuition fees for your studies during uh, your period spent at KTH and that's only for the joint programs and it does not include the living cost. We also have other scholarships which can be found in our on our website. So the acceptance rates uh, is around 30% at KTH and it's also based on the number of admitted students in the relation to the number of applicants who met the admission requirements for a specific program and it also changes depending on the number of applications. So this year for production, we had around 28%. Uh, and to increase your chances of getting admitted at KTH, we would advise you to apply for more than one program. And while applying, it is possible to choose four colleges, four uh, programs in Sweden. It's not necessary to be KTH, but Sweden holds why a one um, site to apply for applications. So how to apply for studies? So the applications is usually done uh, using one portal that is universityadmissions.se and it is the same portal for the whole of Sweden. So I would suggest you start by visiting kth.se slash masters and explore our programs and find one or more programs that fit your interest. And on the program page, you will find details about each program, the course, uh, the career opportunities, sustainability focus, and the interview with students and graduates. If you have any queries regarding uh, the program, we have student ambassadors for each program. You can contact them and they would be happy to help you with any questions. So once you know which program you have selected, it's the next step is to check the admission requirements for your program. You can find the admission requirements program for your program you want to apply on the programs page. As the number of places for each program is limited, the admit admission is quite competitive. So meeting the basic requirement is very essential. So if you think you have your backgrounds are met, so, so you're ready for your application. Then as I told you, we go to university admissions, the Swedish national application system. And the applications for next, next autumn has already begun. And it, the deadline is on 16th of January, 2023. So you'll have to create an account and select your program. You can select up to four programs and rack, rank them in your order of priority. So when you submit your applications, you may also want to know about the KTH scholarships. So I've told you about the KTH scholarships and the deadline for the KTH scholarships are 
uh, the 16th of January. It also, it, if you are applying for some external scholarship, the deadline change is different, but mostly the the scholarships uh, by KTH, it's on 16th of January and it opens on the 1st of December. So once you have done with your application, your selection of your courses, by 1st of February, you have to, um, you have to submit all the required documents in the portal, in the university admissions. You can find the instructions on how to submit your documents and how document requirement may differ between countries at university admissions. And if you are, so you'll also have to pay the application fees by the 1st of February, that's 900 crowns around, around 8,000 rupees. And on this, so for the next autumn, on 30th March, the admission results will be published and you will, you will get an email from university admissions. So you don't have to reply for your offers. And once you're admitted from, we will contact you from KTH and we will help you out with your other processes and prepare you for the arrival. So as I told you, you need to provide a number of documents in your application, which varies from program to program. So one of it is your degree certificate. So I know most of you are, okay, all of you are in your final year or, or third year of your bachelor's. So when it's in your final year, what you can do is you can apply with your transcript and you will be conditionally accepted. And later you can, you will have to provide your details. Then we have the proof for English proficiency. Uh, identification, your know, passport copy. And each program requires uh, specific documents. For example, CV, letter of motivation, letter of recommendation, summary sheet. The summary sheet is provided by KTH. You can find the summary sheet um, in the program page. And it's different for uh, all the programs. So most of you, need to know like what are the career of what opportunities after KTH. So with a degree from KTH, it gives you great future career opportunities. And because of the collaboration with industries, KT and your networking, KTH give you, you're bound to get a job very quickly. So KTH is also a leading supplier of CEOs in the Swedish industries. A lot of KTH alumni have a have industries in the Swedish market. KTH is also ranked 70 in the QS graduate employability ranking. And we every year we host, KTH hosts a career fair called as THS Armada. It is hosted by the student union. It is one of the largest career fair in, the Scandinavia, in Scandinavia. And around 150 companies uh, come to KTH for the event. So you can see the top employers of KTH is KTH. So most of the students who do their masters, they go into PhDs. Then we have Ericsson, Scania, SEB, Thalia, Spotify, Northvolt, Google, Klarna, Microsoft. We also have Sandvik Korman. So for mechanical, most some of my friends are in Scania. Northvolt, Ericsson, yes. So most after your, just before your graduation, like when you do your thesis, most of them get a job before their graduation, around 50% of them. And you also, after your education, you get a one year stay in Sweden to apply for your job or PhD positions. It's a one year job search visa. And each year, Thousand degree projects are proposals are they come from companies and from from that around twenty percent of students get their first employment after doing their master thesis the company employ them so we also have KTH innovation which gives support of if you have your own idea it gives them support and twelve percent of KTH graduate graduates start their own company. And just before, like even 
when you're studying, I have friends of mine who currently work at Scania, Northvolt, and um, Ericsson. So they are working as well as studying. So uh, apart from industries, people, also, students also go to doctoral studies. So 12% of the international students go into PhD studies and KTH, cons the PhD studies, at, doctoral studies at KTH consist of three years of full-time research and one year of course. The applicants apply uh, through, the, um, through the positions announced on KTH website. Has KTH recruits only the best candidates? Often KTH master to students and the, is, are selected. And the selection process is highly complicated, competitive because I have a corridor friend who had applied and he told me the process of it and it was quite, quite intense. And the doctoral students are employed by the university and receive a monthly salary. So when you're working on your uh, PhD, you're you have been paid for it. And you'll also have to uh, ha do work as a teaching assistant in some of the courses. Okay. So uh, these are the sites. If you want to find out more about the current KTH students, about their studies, you can follow the student bloggers and ask questions online at KTH website. So this term we have the student bloggers has Lorenzo Rego. You can find them on, you can find and follow KTH on social medias such as Facebook, Twitter. I would recommend you to follow us on Instagram, on our Instagram page, KTH University. You will have a glimpse of our everyday life from one of our bloggers who show, show you how their life is at KTH. Then like yesterday, one of, one of the bloggers showed him he had a presentation and then assignments. So it's quite interesting if you follow KTH University page. And you can also uh, follow this, go to this website, www.kth.se slash follow and sign up to our newsletters to get um, notification on upcoming webinars and other things. So we have webinars in the month of November from each school, you can scan our QR code for the upcoming webinars. So in engineering, science and chemistry, biotechnology and health is on 10th of November. Industrial engineering and management, so is on 15th of November. And engineering science is on 17th of November. Architecture and build environment, 22nd November. Electrical engineering and computer science is on 24th of November. So you can sign up for the webinars and they will give you in-depth of the school. So if it's industrial engineering and management, that's my school. We would tell you more about each courses provided by our school. So you can also connect to me by scanning this code or you can reach to me on my email ID. If you scan the code, you can find my interview on the web page and any queries you can just drop me a message on that, or you can also connect me on LinkedIn. This is my URL. And if you have any questions, you can pop them up right now. Yes, thank you, Clive. It was a very nice, informative uh, presentation about KTH University, uh, Sweden. And uh, yeah. I would like to like know a little more things. Uh, though yeah, sure. we had in a uh, uh, very good uh, contact but still I didn't I think ask you uh, before like uh, you had a plan of uh, going for uh, master studies uh, yes. like abroad and uh, you were working in Kenya and then which all the like places or university you first uh, thought of to join for your MS okay yeah the first you know, first place I thought of was Germany like everyone knows like let's go to Germany it's a good unit like most of the mechanical people go to Germany uh, just during my research, I got interest in production and I started searching which courses are offered by various universities. And KTH, I saw KTH in the top 100 and it also gave me, a, gave me the, uh, the course I wanted, the program I wanted, that's production engineering and management. Uh, and because of the reputation of KTH, 
and the interest of my course, I selected KTH and Sweden. I did uh, think of other places, but at the end, I did land up in Sweden. Okay, fine. So you are happy now? Yeah, I'm really happy. I don't regret the uh, the really decision. So, yeah. so your decision was perfect. Yes. Okay. So students, any students? We have students from final year and uh, pre-final year. You have yeah. any queries, any doubts regarding high studies? So you can uh, ask and uh, get to know your queries. Yes. Yeah, my question is, uh, is it better to do job or directly enter to masters? Uh, I did. Uh, I did a job because I wasn't sure where to which masters to take. So you're doing mechanical engineering, and you know mechanical engineering is a vast field. Once you're done with your bachelor's, you can go into different fields of uh, interest. And I was quite uncertain which field to go that is the main reason i took my i did my career so that i get an idea of uh, what interest is what i'm interested in like i went into production assistant so i did work there for a month uh, i was like an intern there and then i went i became a maintenance engineer so i developed i felt more into production and that is the main reason i took production engineering and management so if you start a career in design you might think okay let me go ahead in design learn more you will you can go into masters of this um machine des uh, engineering design or integrated product design i have we have a friend of ours like a same batch he did his he went into designing and now he's in iit delhi he's also doing his masters in uh, designing so you know which uh, track you want to take because most of the bachelor students, even myself, when I was in bachelor's, I was I didn't know which course to take. And I used to ask everyone, like, which is good, which is good, which course do I take? But at the end, it is your interest which matters, not what other thing, other people think. So you would like to say if the, like, a fresh graduate, rather than joining for MS, better work for one or two years, it will give you more wisdom or more knowledge to learn MS. Yes, but if you are really interested, we have students in our program who have who are just out of the bachelors. We also have students who are doing their three plus two from a university in Bangalore. So it doesn't really matter. But if you are real, if you really are interested in certain track, like okay, I've done four years of bachelors, and now you know, like I want to do my masters in design, then you can go ahead with your masters. But if you are uncertain where to go, I would prefer you work for some years, get experience, and then do your master's. Okay. Thank you. It was nice. So any other questions from students? Yeah. Sure. So uh, about the money, I, am, I want to ask about uh, the part-time job offers there. Yes. Uh, How part is it? Like, see, so is it? Um, okay, part-time job in Sweden, you don't have any limit. You can work for any number of hours. Like some places like Germany, um, Netherlands, they do have limits of work hour per week. We don't have a work weekly work hour, uh, limit. Uh, I didn't start my, I didn't do any part-time job for my first year. Uh, one reason was I didn't get my bank account till January, I was I had a delay with some other issues, so I could not uh, take any part-time job. And then one, then once I got my uh, bank ID, it was winter, so I did not think of going out and doing some job. But there are jobs which are available. Uh, if you want, some people do get jobs in companies as a uh, student work working student. 
So you work as a student as well as you do your academics. And then we have other jobs uh, like deliveries or um, in shops or restaurants. Some shops, they because we are in Sweden, you require to know Swedish, but delivery jobs don't require Swedish. And some um, industries also, you don't require Swedish. So now this year I am been doing some, a bit of part-time job. And also I'm doing a part-time job at KTH as a teaching assistant for one of the courses. I spend around six, hour, six hours per week teaching, other, teaching in the lab. So I teach uh, at CAD. Yeah. And so most of my friends are doing part-time job. And I don't think it's, if you are, if you can manage your academics and part-time job, you can do it. Uh, and it's like a power hourly rate. You get 130 crowns per hour. That is around a thousand rupees per hour with 30% tax cut in that. So you'll have to pay 30% tax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any more I, questions? Finally, yes, any questions? So no? if you have any okay. other questions any... and you don't want to ask me right now, you want to you want to ask me personally, you can just connect to me with through my email ID, LinkedIn, or just scan the QR code, you'll get my interview and there's a form you can fill up and uh, connect to me with me. Okay. Yeah, one second. One one oh yeah, one question. Do we need any SOV before joining the KTH or uh, any other universities in any foreign countries? SOP. Um, you, it depends on the course. Like my course did not require a SOP during my time. And it also did not require English, English province that time. So I did not have to show my IELTS, but from this year, it is there. I guess we also have to write a SOP for from this year onwards. You'll have to check the program requirements for each course. And other other universities, they do have SOP. It all depends from university to university. Okay. Thank you, Clive. I think uh, your queries have been answered. Any any other queries? Any questions? Anyhow. Uh, you can contact him uh, like uh, through his email ID or LinkedIn profile or uh, any other means and uh, get to know. So before we conclude, uh, um, Clive, we would like to wish you all the very best. Complete your degree with uh, good grades and uh, get a very nice job in Sweden as you wish. And uh, of course, we'll be very proud of you because uh, you'll be one of our alumnus working, uh, studying in Sweden and getting a good job in Sweden. Uh, of course, it will give us a uh, like a very good a uh, nice happy moment for us. Thank you very much for Thank getting you. connected with us today. And uh, uh, in future also, whenever we need you, definitely we'll contact you. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. You. All Thank the very you. best. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there are like, uh, uh, how, it, how it was? Good? Okay. There are so many of our alumnus. For example, it's uh, uh, Batchmate itself uh, right now doing his uh, master's in design uh, in IIT Delhi. Okay, he wa was working in Borosil for uh, four years. Okay, 2018 they graduated from here. Now it's 2022 or uh, yeah, um, beginning I think uh, no, almost uh, three months over. Okay, he's uh, like uh, started doing that. If you want, we can connect, we can have a meet like this uh, to like know more about like how to go for it, like how the uh, experience of working then uh, studying again and all those things if you are interested. But uh, sadly to see very few number of final years here, uh, though like many of uh, were asking me like about the uh, like opportunities, uh, maybe a higher uh, education opportunities at uh, uh, like uh, various uh, countries, but today when we make an opportunity for us, okay, it's very sad and uh, of course in future only if there is a request from him and uh, like uh, if there are requested students, give their name, then only we'll have this kind of uh, alumni meet, otherwise uh, our talks. So thank you very much, Clive. Thank you very much. Yeah. So please send me the red. Uh, thank you.
talk, okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.